Now I want you to, I want you to just stand there for a minute. Shut your eyes. We can say, Lord, give us eyes to see. But right now, right where you are, I want you to ask the Lord to open up to you. A vision, a picture, a revelation. The word revelation is apokalupsis. It literally means to remove the veil or remove the curtain. So you can see what is right in front of you. There's an activation right now of visions. Visions is just God speaking to you in picture form. Thank you, Jesus. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear. All over this place. All over this place. Reveal it, Lord. I want you to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath of the Ruach of God. The Ruach also means the prophetic spirit in Hebrew. So take a deep breath. It was that sound of the rushing mighty wind. That was the Ruach breath of God that was being released on the day of Pentecost. Now just begin to pray in the spirit right now. All over this place. Lord, we seal this right now, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Come on, God's going to give you new tongues. New tongues. Not just the same old tongues you've had. There's new tongues being released. There's new tongues. There's interpretation of tongues. There's new gifts that are being released tonight. In the name of Jesus. One more time, let's just give a shout to the Lord. Hallelujah! <laughs> Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. As they're going back to their seats, I want to give away a few books. Um, Jessica, I prophesied to you about being a Deborah. I actually have written a book called The Deborah Company. Um, you can have that. I just want you to understand the prophetic call that's on your life. I've also written a book called Discernment. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Tell me your name. Stacy. It's a, a book on discernment about understanding the voice of God. And uh, this, is my, this is one of my latest books. It's called Declarations for Breakthrough. If ever there was a house... That has this book. Do you guys have this yet? Do you have this yet, Kim? Yeah, let me give that to you guys. Declarations for Breakthrough. Amen. Now I've done my job that my office always gets mad at me that I don't ever talk about my book. So, hallelujah. You guys can be seated for, for just a moment. We're, we're going to be stirring it up again in just a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry if I drenched some of you with water, but some of you needed that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, as I was praying, I really felt like the Lord said that. Um, that this was, this was an, an important crossing over place. How many have felt this stirring for more? I mean, this atmosphere is so pregnant. Do you know an atmosphere can be pregnant? And I felt that tonight as we were doing this prophetic demonstration that there was a, there was a birthing that was take play, taking place that was going to catapult you into the more. Now that means that you need to you need to be watchful for the more. That means that when you go home tonight, I want all of you to have your phone or your iPad or a pen or a paper paper set it by the side of your bed because God's going to speak to a lot of you in dreams. How many have prophetic dreams? So just for you guys to know. I wrote probably one of the first books on dreams and visions over 30 years ago. And do you know that over 30 years ago, nobody talked about prophetic dreams? How many have been around long enough to know that that's true? Nobody talked about it. But see, today we're in a whole different day. And I believe that in this place, you guys are going to begin to experience a phenomenal outpouring of dreams, of visions, of angelic encounters. And I loved what you prayed. No delusion, no confusion. 
Look at your neighbor and say, don't be weird. <laughs> don't be weird. But I, I truly do believe that this house is going to begin to manifest a double portion anointing. A double portion of this amazing revival anointing with a thrust of a prophetic spirit that breaks things open. And listen, it's already been happening. But see, this is a normal part of the Christian walk. Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. How many here are the sheep of the Lord? Amen. So we're going to hear the voice of the Lord. And I, and I love Psalms 29, verse 4. It says the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord in Hebrew, that literally means the voice of the Lord is a force. So what we have to understand is that when we hear the voice of God and when we speak, when we say what God is saying, that's prophecy. When we say what God is saying, that is prophecy. And when we do that, it releases a force in the spirit that begins to break things open. It begins to change things. It begins to create things. See, what we have to understand is that the prophetic is not as much about information as it is about impartation. And we've got to stop treating it just like information and understand that there's an impartation of power and a force that breaks things open and changes us. And it begins to change others and change the circumstance that's around us. This house has an amazing, incredible spirit of breakthrough. But the Lord said part of this double portion is that it's going to be breakthrough and glory. Did you feel it tonight? There was breakthrough. Then we came into this place of amazing glory. Amazing manifestation. And some of you actually were getting healed during worship. I saw the Lord bringing alignment to backs and a release of joints that have been frozen. If you have issues in your back or jo joints that are frozen, I want you to just jump to your feet really, really quick. Let's just do this really quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you just got healed when you jumped up. Just start moving. Father, we thank you, God, that you've already broken the way open. Come on, that you've already done some things. God, we just release it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody here have a, a shoulder that needs to get unlocked? Right back there. Right back there. Father, I just decree unlocking of shoulders. Come on, just begin to move them. Father, I just decree right now, Father God, a release that's coming. A release that's coming right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God, that every, every physical need in the joints right now, God, is being met and healed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a scripture to you. So open up your Bibles. Turn to wherever the Holy Spirit shows you. <laughs> Actually, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 60. What in the world's happening in the world today? Isaiah 60. For those of you that don't know it, it says, Arise, shine. Say it with me if you know it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Put your hand on your belly and say, it's rising on me. Those first two words, arise, shine, in the Hebrew literally mean wake up and be set on fire. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, wake up. And be set on fire. You know, back in the sec back in the Second Reformation, uh, John Wesley said this. He used to go into these towns, and they would drive him out of the churches because of his wild, radical revival preaching. And so he would go out, and he'd just stand up on a stump, no amplification, no microphone, and he'd start preaching over in England. And as he'd preach, people would come out of their houses. People would come out of their villages. Uh, on different occasions, there'd be 10, 20,000 people gathered together in a field in rainy, cold England. Am I telling the truth, Tommy? <laughs> rainy, cold England. And somebody asked him one time, they said, how do you get people to come out and listen to you? I mean, this was an old religious crowd. And they said, how do you get people to come listen to you? And he said, it's easy. I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. 
come on. I know that this house is full of people that are setting themselves on fire with the anointing of God. And it's going to be a phenomenon to see the people that come to your home, to your workplace. You're going to be working at your job and there's going to be people that circle your desk. There's going to be people that come in and out of your office and you're going to say, can I help you with something? And they're going to say, what is it about you? Because when we're carriers of revival, when we're carriers of the anointing, everybody should be able to see it. Now, for those of you that are literalists, don't actually set yourselves on fire. Tonight, the Lord said that he's shifting you out of only revival. Not leaving revival, but breaking it open into awakening. In the, in the second reformation in this, com- in this country, a guy named Charles Finney, he said this. He said, revival changes the heart of a man, but an awakening changes the heart of a nation. And I believe we've got to understand that as amazing as these last seven years have been, God's getting ready to take it higher.